overview of, of some of the topics we, we covered yesterday, I think really with the goal to helping it help us um, keep in mind what happened and help frame the discussion um, for today. So the first part of the day was spent on an overview by DOE. And we had, I think, I think some very interesting talks from Bob Marley, Mike Derby, and Shannon Davis. Um, Bob Marley provided an overview really of the, of the WIDO research portfolio and talked about ways um, that it's really been contributing to reductions in the levelized cost of energy. His desire that we help um, develop some tools that are useful across the industry and then also increasing the department's focus on offshore application. Uh, Mike Derby provided a vision for DOE's wind program and I stole the figure here um, from his presentation because I thought it, it, it's a very nice schematic of what we like to think about as we go through the mesoscale microscale coupling process project, right? Looking at, at things like global and synoptic scale weather events, how that impacts mesoscale processes, and then ultimately looking down um, onto the impact of individual wind plants and wind turbines. And then we're beginning to think as a community, I think more carefully um, about not just the wakes within the plants, but the plant to plant wakes. And he listed a number of different R&D challenges, including atmospheric science, wind plant aerodynamics, technology development, the high penetration grid integration, and then siting and environmental impacts. And then Shannon Davis, who's the, the newest um, team member back at DOE, provided some of his insight uh, and provided an overview of the current atmospheric science research portfolio at DOE, really with the goal of better characterization of the atmospheric boundary layer, including both new observations and new model physics, and then enhancing the ability to observe and simulate atmospheric phenomena from the mesoscale to microscale, which is, which is the, the focus of the MMC project that we have at DOE. Then we moved into an industry panel and I, I find being a lab scientist, it's always nice to hear um, what the research priorities are across um, industry. So we had three different talks here. The first one was by Mark, um, modeling implications for hybrid wind plants. And he really described a future with a hybrid power plant combining um, solar, wind, and batteries, or just wind and batteries, or solar and batteries, and the associated changes um, in the needs for meteorological modeling, in including, I think, an increased need for probabilistic forecasts and the ability to optimize this hybrid wind plant. Philip provided um, his viewpoints on wind energy resource and assessment, and really a, a, a need to get down to even finer resolution, um, so approaching 50 meters in the horizontal. And he shared that they have really short industry timelines. And this, this I found very informative, um, thinking about being a laboratory scientist. And now we've been working on the MMC project for approximately five years, um, that frequently they have to be turning things around in a matter of, of, of weeks to months. Um, so clearly some, some time scales there regarding throughput, which I think has an impact um, on the type of tools one would want to design and be able to use. Um, he advocated a better understanding of model errors and then the use of high fidelity models um, really to develop and inform improved reduced order models. Greg talked about his experience in atmospheric challenges in the wind energy industry, um, including a, an approved ability to estimate site and turbine specific extremes and complex terrains. Um, the use of high fidelity models to create meso-informed, what he called meso-informed microscale surrogates and the ability to um, ensemble average a large number of scenarios. He touched on the use of machine learning um, for wake modeling, better understanding of the mesoscale role in large arrays. And he also shared that he thought there'd be relatively little growth um, of HPC in the industry over the near future. We had a series of breakout, well, I guess we had, we had a, a breakout session um, at the end of the day where we were randomly assigned to groups and, and a number of different um, questions were posed to each group, not necessarily exactly the same questions. Um, the first one was for offshore development, how do you gauge the importance of coupling ocean and wave models? And the comments we got there from the breakouts were that it's really critical uh, for floating wind, wind turbines. Um, certainly the wave driven winds impact the wind field and the hub height winds. And really a need to show that the coupling um, the coupling that we would want to do in the, in the context of the project like this really impacts the loads on the wind turbine. And then observations and studies to show how phenomena um, such as blocking directly affects power. The main thinking here is that, that the powers that be will, will take it much more seriously if we can show that there's an impact um, on the power production. There was a question about how do you see machine learning impacting your industry's modeling tools? 
Um, the general sentiment was it can be very useful if used properly. And I think this is true of, of many of these different um, statistical methods that come along that it's, it's easy to use them incorrectly. Um, this can even be, we, we had a discussion afterwards, this could even be the case with a full physics model, right? It's, it's important to know your tool and to understand the caveats. Um, and it is used extensively in forecasting for bias correction and power production and power forecasting. The third question is, what are the likely HPC platforms of the future? So owned versus cloud. And are you considering next generation accelerators like GPUs? Um, there were a couple of things that were brought up. One was, was the difficulties in managing very large data sets within the cloud. Um, but others thought that the cloud was actually quite valuable in increasing and decreasing resources on the fly. Um, there was, seemed to be generally less enthusiasm around GPU development, although some is underway. I don't think we had a representative um, within the groups, groups that answered this question that were involved in the GPU um, development. And then when we asked for the challenges of wind plant interactions, um, the main thing that came up there was a need, we need tools to model the wind farm communication and interactions. There was a question about the unique challenges for offshore deployment and operation, including blockage effects and wakes, and then the relatively scarce wind observations at offshore sites, especially for machine learning applications. When we ask what atmospheric processes are most important, yet challenging to model, um, the things that came up were blockage effects and wakes, extreme events, low level jets and sea breeze, and then uncertainty um, is still a large problem and, and it's important to be able to quantify it as we think about each of these different phenomena. The next question was to what extent does industry require high fidelity solution rather than low order approaches? And there is a sentiment that, be, that there needs to be both high and low fidelity solutions. There's a time and place for each one, but that industry will pay more for higher fidelity models if the benefit um, can be clearly demonstrated. And there was a call for teamwork between the high fidelity and low fidelity modelers. And the final question, um, to what extent might MMC methods be applied to enable greater confidence in promoting innovative design um, and deployments? And the main feedback there was to learn what measurements we need to add um, in order to improve our high fide higher fidelity models, um, ultimately with the goal of informing the lower order models. Um, so that gives you a really quick synopsis um, of what we talked about yesterday. We're getting ready to dive into um, today where we have two panels. Um, the first one, offshore wind modeling opportunities and challenges. Then we'll have a short break, assuming that everyone finishes on time. And then panel two, is modeling challenges for wind energy. And then I wanna point out that we have um, three parallel breakout sessions um, and I've highlighted here in yellow, um, it should be in the agenda and I think it will also appear in the chat. Um, you will explicitly need to go to a different meeting for the, either one of these breakouts, um, the details of downscaling, modeling of turbines um, or using artificial intelligence. And then when those are over, um, I show here at the bottom, you'll need to return to the main meeting room and come back um, to the Zoom link. So I think with that, I will stop and pass the baton off to Will.